Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, coming at you with my Humidigi F2 review. So let's get started. So this is the Humidigi F2. The phone was first announced in late 2019, and the rollout of the phone has taken a little bit of time, but it's well worth the wait because this really is an awesome device. Now the phone is officially available at a variety of different retailers, including Amazon, AliExpress, and others. So I will be leaving links in the video description so that you can check this phone out and see the most up-to-date pricing for it. But currently on Amazon, it is available for $249.99, and I believe if you get it from AliExpress, you can save some money and get it for just $199. But keep in mind that especially if you're located in the US, the shipping is gonna be significantly faster if you do go with Amazon. The next thing I wanna mention is that if you are basing your opinions about this phone off of some of the earlier reviews on Amazon or some of the earlier YouTube videos that were released regarding this phone, you should definitely reconsider your opinions about it because this phone has received quite a few software updates even in the last couple of weeks that have made it dramatically better. And I'm really happy about that because the actual hardware here with the Humidigi F2 is super solid and we'll take a deeper look at that in a little bit. But this is easily one of the best built Humidigi devices that I've ever used and I've used quite a bit of them over the last year and a half or so. In fact, I've had pretty much every Humidigi phone, including the Humidigi X, Humidigi F1, Humidigi Power, Humidigi A5 Pro, and more. So I do know quite a bit about the brand. Now the device itself is a dual SIM phone with a dedicated slot for a micro SD card. So there are three total slots inside and it is a GSM only phone. Now some people have commented on my Humidigi F2 hands-on video that they have had success with using the phone with Verizon, but the phone does not officially have Verizon support. So if you are a Verizon customer, then go at your own risk. But if you use AT&T or T-Mobile, then this is certainly a good option for you. In fact, I've been using the phone with Cricut Wireless and it's been working very well. Now the device features a massive 6.53 inch display at 1080p with a 19 and a half by nine aspect ratio and a PPI of 395. Now the display itself is an LCD display, but despite it being LCD, it is super bright and vibrant and really does look great. I recently did a comparison of the Humidigi F2 up against the Samsung Galaxy A51, which has an AMOLED display. And while I will admit the AMOLED display does look slightly better, the LCD display here certainly does keep up and does look really fantastic. In addition to that, we are getting a hole punch in the display off to the left side. So I personally feel like that's a nice upgrade compared to having a water drop notch like we got with the Humidigi F1. Now that front facing camera is 32 megapixels and later on in the video, I'll show you some photo and video samples from it, but it really does produce some excellent results. Now internally, we're getting 128 gigabytes of storage with the Humidigi F2. And if that's not enough for you, like I mentioned a second ago, we also have SD card expansion. So you can put a micro SD card in the phone to further expand that storage beyond 128 gigabytes. Now there is no wireless charging with the Humidigi F2, but we do have a fingerprint sensor with the phone. And what's really awesome is that the fingerprint sensor is also the power button. So I feel like this is a great, excellent, and convenient placement for that fingerprint sensor. I know that the big trend nowadays is to have an in-display fingerprint sensor or to have one on the back of the phone. But I actually feel like having the fingerprint sensor where the power button is really is the most practical placement for it. It's more convenient than trying to put your finger in the middle of your display. And it's also more convenient than trying to find the fingerprint sensor on the back of your phone. So I'm perfectly happy with it being on the side of the device. In addition to that, it's very quick and responsive too. So you're gonna have no issues with unlocking your phone. Now, if you're not a big fan of fingerprint sensors, you can actually use face unlock to unlock your device as well. So that is yet another option here with the Humidigi F2. Now on the rear, the phone features a quad camera setup. So we're getting a 48 megapixel main camera 
a 5 megapixel depth sensing camera for portrait mode, we're getting a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, and we're also getting a macro camera. And later in the video, I will be showing you some samples from all of these various cameras. So you do of course get portrait mode with the rear camera, but unfortunately there is no portrait mode with the front facing camera. Now the device features 6 gigabytes of RAM and the MediaTek Helio P70 processor. Now if you're not sure about MediaTek processors in 2020, the Helio P70 is actually a really good processor. I know in the past, MediaTek hasn't put out the fastest processors ever, but the P70 is pretty much right in line with Qualcomm's 600 series processors. So you should definitely expect good performance. I know that the phone is very quick and snappy to navigate around, and part of that is due to it having a stock version of Android 10. Now if you're curious about more info regarding the performance of the phone, I did run an Intuitu benchmark test, and I'll show you the results right now. So with the phone, I got a total score of 179968 which is definitely very impressive, especially for a phone in this price range. Now, in case you're curious, flagship phones like the Galaxy S10, for example, feature around 400,000 for the Intuitu Benchmark score, but then other devices like the Samsung Galaxy A20 are a little bit over 100,000. So I would say that the Benchmark score here is very competitive for a phone in this price range. Now, video recording with the phone maxes out at 1080p at 30 frames per second for both the front and rear cameras. We're getting a beefy 5,150 milliamp hour internal battery with the phone, which you can charge with an 18 watt fast charger. So a massive battery with the device. It is a relatively large phone, but at the same time does have a decently slim profile. So it is pretty incredible that they were able to include such a large battery in the phone. And then finally, we're getting NFC with the Humidigi F2. Now, in case you're curious, I did verify all of these various specifications with the CPUX app. So everything is 100% legitimate, which is great to see. Now, despite this phone receiving several software updates very recently, it still is stuck on the October 5th, 2019 security patch. And I have no idea if or when, or if ever, the phone will receive a newer security patch. So keep that in mind. I would really like though to see Umidigi at least implement one security patch this spring. I think that would be a great thing to see. But again, I wouldn't necessarily count on it based off their previous track record. Another thing too is that I do not think the Umidigi F2 will get Android 11 because the company typically does not update their phones to newer versions of Android beyond what ships with the phone. So for some people that's important, for other people it's not important. For example though, the Umidigi F1 shipped with Android 9 Pie, and it's stuck on Android 9 Pie. There is no Android 10 coming to the Umidigi F1, at least not that I'm aware of. So it is nice though that the Umidigi F2 comes with Android 10, because that's most likely the version of the software that will be on the phone forever. I do understand in some ways why they don't update their phones to newer versions of Android as they come out. I believe a big part of that is because they're already giving you a lot of hardware here for the money, and they simply don't have the budget to hire a full-time developer team to update these various phones to newer versions of Android. And this is probably a separate topic for a whole different video. With every version of Android that does come out, Google doesn't always add that many new features. So I'd imagine that Android 11 is probably going to be pretty similar to Android 10 anyway. So as long as you're happy with Android 10, you should be happy with the Umidigi F2 as long as you have it. But now that we've gone over the specifications of the Umidigi F2, let's take a closer look at the actual hardware itself. So I already talked a lot about the front panel here. We're getting a great screen to body ratio. There is a little bit of a thicker bezel here at the bottom, but I really do like that we do get a hole punch for the front facing camera. And definitely with how large of a display you're getting here and a decently small body, it's gonna be a great phone for media consumption, whether that's watching videos on YouTube or maybe Amazon Prime Video or Netflix or browsing the web or going on social media. You're gonna have a good experience here since the display is very large. But at the same time, since it is 19 and a half by nine, the phone is very easy to hold in one hand. In case you're curious too, you do have the ability to swap out these standard Android navigation buttons for a gesture-based navigation system. You can find this in the settings on the phone. And I am putting out a tips and tricks video very soon that does go into that in detail. Now taking a look at the left side of the device, we have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM cards. 
Then on the right of the phone, we have the power button, which also features that fingerprint sensor, and we have the volume button. Then on the top of the phone, there's nothing. And then on the bottom of the phone, there's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. There's the microphone. There's the USB-C port for charging and data transfer. And we have the speaker. And then finally, on the back side of the device, we of course have that quad camera setup. We have the flash and we have Umidigi branding. And also, I really like this color here on the back. This is the blue color of the phone. And there's also a red color available as well. But I think this looks really sharp. And overall, the phone does feature a very premium build. Definitely a way more impressive and better looking build than what the Umidigi F1 had. And that's saying a lot because I actually liked the build quality of the F1. But the F2 feels significantly better. And going from the F1 to the F2 is certainly not a small upgrade. This is a pretty significant upgrade. I will be making a video though pretty soon going over my thoughts regarding switching from the F1 to the F2. I don't have my F1 anymore, but I still have a great memory of it. And of course, I have a variety of different videos on the channel about the F1. Now, like I mentioned earlier, using Cricut Wireless with the Umidigi F2 has been a very good experience. It was literally as simple as taking my activated Cricut SIM card and putting it in the device and then the APN settings immediately updated and I was able to immediately begin using the phone. If you're not aware, Cricut Wireless is based off of AT&T's network, so the phone will also work really well with AT&T. And what's nice too is that the F2 features global GSM bands inside, so pretty much anywhere in the world you'll be able to use the Umidigi F2. Oh, I'm getting a phone call. Oh wait, that's me from my other phone. Let's try this out and see how calling works. Hello? Hello? <laughs> yeah, a lot of feedback there. Okay, well, calling works. You can also see that the phone interface looks very similar to the one on iOS. Pretty interesting. But this is due to it being stock Android. The typing experience is also very good with the device. The keyboard is very responsive, so let me type out a message right now. So there you go, nice and quick there. I'm gonna send that off to my iPhone. And you can see the message sent very quickly. Now I'll send some emojis back. And there you go, very fast as well. So you're gonna get very nice GSM carrier compatibility with the phone. If you wanna use Verizon with this, go ahead at your own risk, but it's not an official Verizon certified device and Umidigi also doesn't advertise this phone as working with Verizon. Now, if you're a big fan of using Instagram, then just know that the Umidigi F2 does work really well with the app. So the app does perform nice and smooth here on the phone. So that's excellent. Stories work really well here too, nice and fast. So that's excellent. And then if you want to record your own story, that works really well too. So the F2 is nicely optimized for Instagram, which is great. And then if you want to record your own story, that works really well too. So the app is nicely so I don't know what this green bar is on the side. I did notice this though with Instagram, but as soon as I do upload the video itself, that goes away and everything looks perfectly fine within the app itself. So this might be one little optimization they still need to make. I'm not really sure. But like I said, as soon as you hit that share to story button or you send it to a friend, they do not see this green bar on the right side of the phone. Web browsing is also nice and smooth with the F2. And a big part of that is due to it having that six gigabytes of RAM. So a lot of RAM to keep everything nice and loaded up. You can see as I scroll up and down, everything is already preloaded. So it's a very smooth experience. You can also zoom in with no issues at all. And then you can see too, the actual websites look super sharp on this budget phone. This phone with someone else, then you have the ability to create multiple profiles, or maybe you want to share... So videos look sharp and crisp on the Umidigi F2. You can watch, of course, YouTube videos up to 1080p, since the phone features a 1080p display. But you can see when you do crop in the videos, it creates a very immersive experience and the hole punch for the front facing camera really doesn't bother me at all. I certainly like it being in that corner a lot more than it being in the middle, kind of like what we get with the Galaxy A51, for example. And the reason for that is because I just feel like it's less intrusive being in the corner compared to being in the middle. But that is a personal preference and not really a huge deal. But let's now take a look at some photo samples from the Umidigi F2. Camera quality has certainly been a weakness with the Umidigi in the past, especially with the Umidigi F1. 
I know that phone was advertised with having really great cameras, but the reality was is that it didn't take that great of photos. However, the narrative has been redefined with the Umidigi F2. Like I mentioned, some of the earlier reviews you might see online might claim that the phone doesn't have the best camera quality out there, but I went out yesterday and took a bunch of photos and videos, and things really do look nice, especially for a phone in this price range. Of course, don't expect photo quality anywhere near a flagship device like the Galaxy S10, for example. But for a phone at under $300, I would say that the photos look perfectly fine and they're all very usable. In addition to that, I was able to take some really nice looking photos with the ultra wide angle camera and the macro camera worked surprisingly well too. The only thing with the macro camera is that you really, really do have to get close to the object. In some situations, the phone was almost touching the plant that I was trying to take a photo of. So compared to the macro camera that I used with the Galaxy A51, it seems like the macro camera on the F2 is even more of an actual macro camera. But the colors look nice that I was able to take with this device. There is no doubt though that the 48 megapixel main camera does take much better looking photos than the 13 megapixel ultra wide angle camera. The wide angle camera still does take decent photos though, don't get me wrong. I just feel like the colors and saturation with the main camera are significantly better. But the good news though is that all the photos that I was able to take with this phone are certainly usable and do look nice. Compared to, for example, with the F1, I remember taking some pictures that had colors that were totally off or the colors had a yellow tint throughout, but that is not an issue at all with the F2. You can see these pictures with your own eyes. Now I did post one sample photo from the F2 onto my community tab here on my channel. And I was kind of surprised to see that some people said that the quality didn't look good. I don't really understand that. I think it looks fine. Of course, it's nowhere near a flagship level, but compared to other devices that this phone competes against, like the Galaxy A20 and Galaxy A51, I would say that this is very competitive compared to those devices. Now I know that Xiaomi has phones out there that have very good photo quality. I just haven't covered any of those phones on the channel, so I can't really give you my opinion of how these pictures look compared to the pictures that those devices can take. But I would say that just judging these photos on their own, I think they look perfectly fine. I could totally see myself going on a vacation and using this device to take a variety of different photos and videos while I'm there. And these photos are definitely good enough to share to social media, which I'm actually gonna be sharing quite a few of these on Instagram very soon. So make sure to follow me over there at Kevin Breeze TV. But the photos are definitely worth keeping. As far as the video quality goes with the F2, I certainly don't think it's really the best out there, that's for sure. It seems like the Samsung phones do do a better job at taking video, but I'll show you the samples right now and I'll let you be the judge for that. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, coming at you with a test video from the Umidigi F2. So let me know what you think of the quality from both the actual video itself and the audio as well. Definitely interested to know what you think. And there is quick autofocus in video mode, which is really awesome too. Really happy to see that. I'll be recording the video in wide angle as well. So I'll do that next. And here's a video from the wide angle camera with the Umidigi F2. So compare the previous video with the standard camera to see the difference in how much more content is able to fit into the frame. And here is a front-facing video sample from the Umidigi F2. So again, let me know what you think of the quality from the camera on this device. It is a little bit windy out today, so if you do hear some wind noise, that is to be expected. But other than that, it's a really nice sunny day outside, which is excellent. So again, let me know what you think of the quality.
So is the Umidigi F2 worth buying? I would say yes, definitely. The phone is way better than the F1 in all ways. I and mean, you're getting way better cameras that actually take good looking photos. You're getting way better specifications overall. And you're also getting way better build quality with this phone. This is truly a beautiful, good looking phone from Umidigi. And I'm just really impressed and excited for them with how awesome this device is. This is really a solid competitor compared to Samsung's A-Series. And I don't think I could say that about their other devices they launched in 2019. So props to Umidigi for really creating a winner with the F2. There's a couple things with this phone that really make it stand out. The first thing is the display quality. I love how good this display looks. That is excellent. The second thing that makes this phone stand out is the fingerprint sensor that's mounted on the side. I really like that placement. That's very convenient. And I'm glad that they decided to go with it on the side compared to having it on the back. And while I do like having it in display fingerprint sensors, I don't mind not having it with this device. Like I said, this is really the most convenient placement here on the right side of the phone. And then finally, the last thing that really makes this phone stand out is the build quality. It's a super solid phone. It feels higher quality than the Galaxy A20, for example, and even the Galaxy A50. And it's just a super solid device. Now, if you do wanna see what all comes included in the box with this phone, essentially you're getting the USB-C cable, you're getting a case, you're getting a SIM card removal tool, and you're getting the wall adapter. But if you wanna see everything in close detail, then check out my hands-on and first impressions video as I give you a tour of what all comes included in the box. But beyond that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Hopefully this helped you with deciding whether or not you think the Umidigi F2 is a good choice to get. And again, if you want to see the latest and up-to-date pricing for the Umidigi F2, check out the link in the video description as it'll take you over to Amazon where you can check it out. But thanks again everyone for watching. This is Kevin here and I will see you in the next video.